Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Hey, my friends, nerds, and geeks. Welcome back. I have a conversation or discussion today that I want to share with you with my good friend, Jason Gooley. So we're just going to jump right in. And I'm just going to have a conversation with him and we're going to just talk about what is top of mind, what we got going on. Um, been looking forward to get getting Jason really on on the podcast, on the show. And honestly, we're going to do a video one. So let's see how this goes. So Jason, thanks for joining the show. I appreciate it, man. How are you doing? I am doing awesome. Thank you so much for having me. It, I know we've been talking about it for, I don't know, a year or two. <laughs> it's probably been over close to two years, man. You know, honestly, <laughs> it's been a, it's, you know, uh, for the listeners, Jason and I were in a study group years and years ago for our CCDEs. Um, and this is what, four years ago, probably four, maybe even five. Yeah. Wow. Five years ago, you know, and that, that's when we first met and it's been, it's definitely been, um, a long journey for both of us. So, uh, and we talked about the podcast for a while, um, and finally getting you on it, It's definitely been a hectic road road for both of us the last few years. So no kidding. I mean, you, 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 uh, so I ended up having a baby and you continued on with the CCDE and I know. I've got, I've got a, one of these days, I'm, I think I'm going to dive back in and we'll, we'll have to ease into that. But, uh, uh, I was close. I was close multiple times. So yes, uh, you were. We'll get there, I, think. I, I remember one day I will definitely well, get there. I remember, I don't know which Cisco live it was, but I remember being in the CCD pra- uh, tactorial with you. Um, yep. you, me, and Elaine was on the stage and you were asking a whole bunch of questions and I hadn't met you yet. Right. So it was just one of those times where it's like, I was just getting my feet wet and you've been already doing this for, you know, however months. Um, so just kind of to see it in that journey and that process. So it's interesting to me. Yeah. You know, and, and so much has happened since then. I mean, I think when I first started going for it, however many years ago that was uh, prior to prior to that, um, you know, I was thinking, well, one of these days I'm going to go for this certification. And then we ended up having a baby girl. And then that, you know, uh, sidetracked a lot of the uh, the time that I had for studying and, and going for the exam. And then kept ramping up, trying it again. And then we had a baby boy. And then... <laughs> it's just <laughs> life, one, man. I, you know? It's just life. Uh, and, but there you know, so many other cool, positive things going on. And and I, you know, I have so much respect for that uh, program, and obviously you guys in the lane and, and all these folks. It's it's been, it's been a tremendous part of my life, and I love it. And I love the program, and you know, I've I've learned you've learned so much going through it. I mean, the cool thing about the CCDE, I think, which is so awesome, uh, versus the CCIE, is that y- you don't unlearn how to be a good designer. You exactly. Know I mean? So that's that's really beneficial. I mean, not saying you unlearn how to do. OSPF or anything like that, but things change so rapidly from a technology perspective that you may be having to study other things, right? That might completely change, right? Especially with the announcement of all these new certifications, right? And we'll uh, get to those, right? DCD, yeah, with the DE, it's like, you know, you know what you know. And then when you learn, I mean, you're not going to forget that. So I think, I think that's beneficial for me. And it's also, you know, it goes back to that mindset. We've talked about this many times, the whole CCDE mindset, what you need to be able to focus on you know, taking a step back from being so far in the weeds, you know, like as a CCIE implementation mindset. And I think for me personally, I think being out of that for a few years might actually benefit me. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah, 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 I'm sure for, um, so, so I always say this and I'm sure people hear me say this all the time, but, um, the journey is more important than the certification itself because we don't learn in this career field. We don't learn design early enough in our careers. Like we learn right. the ones and zeros. We know the protocols, spanning tree, IGP, BGP, whatever the protocols are. And we know the theory, but we don't know design and why, why are we doing what we're doing? And I think that's from a design and architectural perspective, knowing those things is the biggest and most important thing you can know. I mean, why are you configuring OSPF with uh, LSA three type filtering or something like that, you know, or why do you need, traffic engineering tunnels and your MPLS deployment, you know, you're not just doing it just to do it. Right. Which right. I've been there. I've done it just to so, do yeah, it. Do. So yeah. yeah, yeah. That's the, that's the, that's the SP track. <laughs> yes. That's the yeah. SP track when you're studying for it and you go ahead and implement yeah. it in production. Yes. <laughs> exactly. yes. So, you know, the funny thing is that, you know, with design and I just think I, I, I love it so much. There, there were some folks that were, were in the study group with me and I was mentoring a couple of folks you know, to, to come up to speed on service provider because They'd never gone the I, the IE path for routing and switching or service provider, so they were net new going directly for the DE. And 
I, in a way, I was kind of like, man, it, they have a benefit. I mean, they have like an advantage because there's this totally different mindset that, again, it's hard from when you go down into ones and zeros and you're, you're that deep in an IE level and you've been in what I call lab mode for 10 years. Yeah, years yeah. Lab mode, just lab, 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 and going for all the certifications, doing all this. It's so hard to take a step back and really be able to see it from a completely un, un, unobstructed view of how maybe even an outsider, I don't want to say an outsider, it sounds bad, but how an outsider would look at it, you know, how a customer may look at it. And seeing seeing that and, and the, the folks who I, I was, I'm talking about, just seeing that mindset, you know, there'll be times like, well, what about this? What about that? And we'll be having our debated, heated discussions about why one thing might be the better way to go and why, you know, the whole answer is it, it depends, right? But having those those heated debates and then they say something and you're just like, I never thought of it that way. And it's only because we see it, we're almost like seeing it from the bottom up versus top down network design, exactly. right? Which is like so, so critical and important, you know? Yeah. I, I mean, on this topic, right? I, I think our industry is going to have to shift a little bit and, and start learning how to design at an earlier time than, than because design is such an important thing that again, we just, we just don't learn it early enough in our careers, you know? And I think, I think actually some of the changes with the certification programs, um, is adding design into things, into the, the certs that wasn't there before. And I think that's a huge benefit too. It's going to make you as a, as a, you know, network engineer, network architect, maybe even a junior network engineer, start understanding that I need to design for reasons, for, an, for a, a purpose. And you're not just implementing that technology and walking away. Right. And I'm so glad you mentioned that because, you know, I've, I've been fortunate. I've been working on these new certifications for quite some time now with Cisco and to, to see how things are evolving, you know, in my brain, I think we're, we're going down the right track. I really do because how job roles are evolving, how, you know, the technology is evolving. It's, it's tremendous how we, we've, we've got this nice aligned, you know, future strategy of how the certifications are going to go hand in hand. The training is going to go hand in hand. It's, it's just beautiful. And, and from a design perspective, being able to incorporate all this stuff as you go and still and still have that, that pinnacle, that CCDE pinnacle of, of deep dive, I think is awesome because, you know, I remember for a while back when I was I mean, way back in the day, when I had hair, <laughs> when, when, I, when I, had hair uh, I was originally going for the CCNA and my gosh, it had to be like 97 or something. And um, wow. Uh, yeah. you're, you're you're dating yourself a little, just so you know. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I just aged myself. You think way back, then, and um, there was there was there there was no real design on it, and they were teaching things like the OSI model and all these deep dive things within the CCNA to just to talk about how stuff worked. And as we progressed year, years later, and, and as things evolved and changed, it was it was kind of weird to see a lot of that went away from the certifications. So when you said, you know, this is layer two MAC address, sometimes it was like, mm -hmm. you know, how does that, how does that compute? What yeah. doing? And what, how does that mean CCNA or Cisco or, or whatever it is I'm trying to apply it to? And, and now the fact that we're bringing all of that back, I think is awesome. It's fundamental, right? It really is. It's foundational to how we're going to evolve as, as network engineers or my new key coined phrase that I love to say is network developers. <laughs> So here's a, here's a loaded question since I have you, right? And I'm going to put you uh -oh. on the spot. So what's your opinion then? I mean, you're, you're, you're in, I mean, you've written a number of books, right? Um, a number of programmability books. So what is your take on network engineers becoming programmers? And, you know, do we have to now go and get a programming degree and know everything about computer science? Ha. <laughs> that is a loaded question. I know. <laughs> uh, I, I have a lot. I have, I have a good I have a good opinion on at least my opinion. I think I think it's good. Um, is that how do I say this? You know, you you really don't know what you don't know, right? And what's what what is so important about that saying and that statement is that you just mentioned getting a computer science degree and becoming a, a programmer and all this other thing, these all this other stuff. And I think that there is a very distinct line between the two that isn't often communicated very well. 
So for example, what I always say, because one of the, I talk to a lot of customers, a lot of partners, a lot of folks uh, who are new in career or going for certifications. I do a lot of mentoring and stuff. And when I talk to these folks, there's always this, do I have to be a Python programmer? Or do I have to be, you know, do, do. so the reason I bring this up is that it's not like you're going out and developing SAP, right? You are not creating an application of like, you know, of that caliber, right? That's not what, that's not the purpose. What you are doing, however, is taking the stuff that you know as a network engineer or operator, trying to find ways to automate it, automate it or make it more streamlined. I was going to say automate it, which is... <laughs> that's a good word. Uh, it's another thing that I talk about, like how to how to automate it, do it by itself. It's, yep. it's one of the jokes that I always say. It's like... Hashtag that and trademark. Hashtag automate it, you know, and, yeah. and how, to, how to basically leverage the stuff that you already know and evolve with it to, to, to automate it, do it for <laughs> you, right? And... It, it, there is development in there. I mean, you have to know the concepts of, of how you would be a developer as far as like, you know, making different code relevant or things like, you know, uh, version revi or configuration revisions and, and you know, GitHub and all these other pieces and components that you might never have even thought about before. But all it is, is it's new names for what did you do before? You had a repository where you TFTP'd everything. You had a but on that repository, here are all the different configuration files and things like that. And it's another name for the same concept. You're just attacking it in a different way. So one of the biggest things that I always say is fear not. You're not going to automate yourself out of a job. And if you can, <laughs> if you can automate yourself out of a job, be that good at what you're going to do. Somebody else will hire you, and it's just going to keep on, you know, it's the gift Constant. that keeps on giving at that point, right? You're like, hey, I'm going to automate myself out of a job. Well, all right. <laughs> That's a good thing. That's a good but thing. Not, you know, you're, you're not really looking at it from that that level of depth, I guess I should say. So, so okay. So, you don't need to be a full-on computer science graduate or full-on programmer, but you do need to know basic basic syntax of like Python and whatever language you're running in and how to, how to leverage that within um, – to, to make your life better and, and automate what you need to automate. So uh, something that, that most people don't know, I don't think about me, is that my degree is in computer science. So uh, I'm actually a programmer by trade when I first came into IT. Or well, I guess it wasn't IT. I guess it was development, right? Cobalt doesn't count, man. I, it wasn't <laughs> Cobalt, dude. It was C, <laughs> right? <laughs> C. <laughs> but still. Um, but it's not like we're developing computer games, right? Or, or um, you know, artificial intelligent programs or anything like that. This is a, a very different, potentially different world, um, though AI might play a role in that world. So, you know, and that's a great point. And if you can do that, that's awesome. I mean, that, and that's that's like above and beyond. But I think that, that there's a level set that needs to happen to let folks know that, you know, you, you have to start somewhere. And here's the thing. And this is what I, I love. I love about the whole programmability. And I call it starting on your program programmatic journey. Right. Is that even though there might've been computer science and you might've been doing programmability back in the day, or you know, there's things like software defined WAN or you know, software defined access. And there's all these things that you keep hearing about, right? At some point, not that long ago, nobody knew about any of this, right? It's very yeah. rapid. Yeah. It's very rapid. So don't feel like you're left behind, you know, like there's so many folks out there who are just so much more ahead of the curve. Everybody has to find a place to start. And I think that's, it's one of the benefits of what we're doing with DevNet what we're doing with all the books and the videos and the training and the certifications is that we're bringing everybody along for the ride, you know, and, and that's, that's why I think it's so critical what we're doing with, with all of this at Cisco is that it, one of the best ways, in my opinion, to learn, and you, you, you can, you can smack me down on this or not, is you take a bunch of people who don't know it and you put them together because just like in design, very much just like in design, you could take all these different perspectives and you bring them together as a group and then you can look at it like it's a completely different purview on how you would attack something. You take a bunch of folks who might not be so, so familiar with it and put them together. And then if you have a couple folks who are really proficient at it or semi-proficient at it, that's good because it gives that push and pull of conversation and ideas and, and workflows and, and thought processes that really unlocks learning. 
And that's that's why I really love this, what, we're, what we're doing. You know, I really do. I Dude, do you, so you're touching something that I'm very passionate about. So I got to go on a soapbox for a minute. But uh, um, there's this terminology that that they pull out there called uh, mastermind um, groups, and it's like a um, what do you call it? Like a self, not self help, but it's like a um, the first like motivational speaker years and years ago, um, Napoleon Hill. He created this concept or this idea that um, when you put a group of people that are like minded, driven, and attached or passionate to a goal, whatever that goal is, they create a a higher level mind or a mastermind, if you will. Because if let's say let's just say you me got together every week and we just talked about stuff. And we had our own opinions, our own perspective on things. We would actually create kind of a, another higher level view. So, like your your thoughts on something would inflect would a uh, uh, not inflect um would kind of mold some of my thoughts on things, right? So you're very in the programmability world and you're all about the programmability. I don't know as much about that, but some of the, your perspective and your thoughts would influence is the word I was looking for, but influence my my perspective on it. And then at the end of it all, we'd have this, this quorum or this core kind of thought process all across the entire group. So, um, this is such an important concept because, um, even like, like study groups. So like when I went for my first CCIE years and years ago, um, there, I was in a study group, like most of us, right. Are in study groups. Well, this study group, we had like five or six people that were really dedicated and we talked every day. And when you do something like that for so long, you know, years, um, and you all get that, that, that goal, I mean, we still talk every day. Like that there's, there's not a day we don't talk. You know what I mean? Like it's, yeah. we were, we are bonded. That's, it's a, it's a bond that, that you can't get rid of. You're not going to get rid of it. It's an endless so, bond. So. so, so one of the things that is interesting about that is that, so I, I'm, I'm, I'm a very, very, very humble person. Right. And the whole mind, and you, you know, the master mindset and thinking, you know, I'm very a stickler on words, right? So in, in my mind, it almost signifies that there are people at a certain level who are better and, and I'm not that kind of guy. But what, one of the, let me explain what I mean by this, right? Because if, if we take that same exact example of what you're just talking about and you have some folks who are a little bit more um, competent in a subject and we bring in other folks who might not be, what I think ends up happening is you have an average of a higher, what everybody builds up their skill set, right? So then you might have a couple of people who have been have a lot more experience and things like that. But what you're doing is you're bringing the whole group up to your, your in lifting people up to a, a higher level of learning and, and, and knowledge, which I think is probably the most powerful point of doing specifically what you just said. Is exactly. Oh, yeah. You know, it, and, and one of the things that gets under my skin a lot, and you know, we've talked so many times, man, it, one of the things that really gets under my skin uh, is that holier than thou attitude, you know. We we talk about uh, we talk about this because a lot of times you know when 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 you're talking to somebody who's getting into certifications or wanting to learn or uh, even poking around to think if they want to you know switch their their job roles or their careers to that path right some of the questions that always come up inevitably are well how many times did you take it <laughs> right errors how many, how many times did you take it right. And, and here's the thing, right? And I, and I have no qualms about talking about that. And I, I do all the time to, to, to folks because I think it's important. But the other thing, I, I, the point that I always like to draw is what do you call a person, right, who graduated with a 3.0 grade point average, right, right, with their PhD? Just don't call them a doctor. They're a doctor. Yep. Right? <laughs> It doesn't matter, right? It, yep. it doesn't matter if you pass on your 19th attempt. God forbid, hopefully that doesn't happen. But guess what? You're still considered a doctor or you're still considered uh, at whatever level that you're trying to achieve to, right, or aspire to. And it, 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 I don't want to say infuriates, but maybe kind of does a little bit, you know, <laughs> uh, that that folks dwell on that whole – and if you've passed on the first attempt, cool. I mean, awesome. And, and, and I have I – have, a little mixture, right? And my second one I did, and the first one, definitely not, right? <laughs> but it's it's it, it doesn't matter. And the, the truth of the matter is, just like you said, if you're in that group, or even if you're doing it on your own, and you're you're putting in that effort, and you're you're you, every day you are you are that dedicated. Yep. You're gonna get it. You're gonna get it because the only person standing between you and your destination is 
It's you. Yourself. It's you. Sure. So, so yeah, sure. I'm with you 100. percent And I think actually a few of us in, in our CCD study group were talking about that as well. That like, when, it doesn't matter how many times you take it. Like, you know, and and it, as long as you don't quit, you're good. I mean, you're gonna eventually pass, and you're gonna pass it. You're, always you're gonna hit that goal, right? Um, so I will say that I would do want the group concept, right? Um, because I'd like to articulate this. So you can achieve, if you're motivated, again, this is totally not what we're going to talk about, but just it's, it's, it's a big deal to me. This is leadership. This is coaching. This is mentoring stuff, right? Um, so if you're doing something by yourself, it could take you a long time, right? You may not know what you're doing. You're, you're guessing, right? And I, I'm a big believer, like fail fast, fail hard type of thing. Like make, uh, we call it in the military, uh, prioritize what you're going to do and execute. So make a prioritization of all the things you could do. Take one of them, do it right. Don't wait around. Don't be indecisive. Just do it. Now it might be wrong. You might fail at it and you might realize, Oh, I shouldn't have done that, but you're not wasting time because you're making a decision. You're doing it. Well, when you're by yourself, you're stuck to that that mantra that you you have to try everything. Do you know what I mean? Like you might have a hundred things that you have to try before you find the right thing, but you are going to do it right now. When you're in this group mentality, this this group, uh, like a study group or anything like a mastermind, if you're really going to call it like that, right? Um, sure. Well, now you're sharing people's experiences, people like what worked for them, right? So like when when someone asks me, how did you? be successful or how did you pass the CCE or how did you pass the CCIE or how did you go in the Marine Corps or any of these things, right? And I always, I a level set, here's the things that I did. Here's the things that didn't work for me, right? These things didn't work for me, but they might work for you. You got to make that decision for yourself, but it can save them time and effort and money, um, all these things. So that that's my last, hopefully, soapbox for the show. But yeah, I no, just, no, but that's, that's brilliant because if you think about it, right, you're, you're, you're sharing your experiences with the intent to try to help someone. Exactly. And if 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 you have a group, like you said, and even if it's three people or five mm-hmm. people, mm-hmm. Be, everybody sharing that 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 uh, experience gives you more information. It's like if you're going to buy a car, right? you're going to research the car, whatever type of car it is, you're going to research it, and you're going to figure out what makes the most sense for you. And one of the things that um, one of the things that, because I've got so many different things going on at all times, and and everybody always asks me, how how how, <laughs> with 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 your family and with your day job and all the extra stuff. All yep. Like how do you do it? And one of the things that I mean, you you'd mentioned a motivational speaker, and if I can share this, uh, it, this is kind of funny because it's old. It's old. There is someone named Earl Nightingale. Right, and Earl Nightingale has a CD out there, and it, I mean, it came from tapes or something like from way back, <laughs> way back in the day. For tapes, uh, <laughs> wait, what were it's tapes? Called lead, it's called Leading the Field, and in there he mentions one thing where he gets called in as a consultant to this company that's losing all this money and it's it's having all these problems, and he listens to the guy, the guy's problem who's running the company, and he said, "I'm going to write down this advice on this piece of paper, and I want you to do it, and if you do it." You can pay me what you feel. You pay me what you feel my time was worth, mm-hmm. which is pretty interesting, right? Yeah. He writes down on a paper to prioritize the top five things that are most critical to you and your company. Prioritize one, two, three, four, five. Right. If the top, if the top one is, you know, we have to increase sales or whatever it may be, or I have to pass a certification, or I need to learn BGP or whatever it is. You identify your weaknesses, you put, you prioritize your top five, and you work on number one until it is absolutely complete. Exactly. If you are stuck to the point where you cannot continue on number one, no matter what, because there's some hurdle blocking it, or you're relying on somebody else before you can proceed or whatever it may be, move on to number two. Same exact thing, right? And you, by doing this prioritization, what ends up happening is you kind of almost put, blind, in a good way, you kind of almost put blinders on. And focus specifically on the task at hand mm-hmm. until it's complete. Yep. And once it's complete, you're going to look up and say, I can't believe, I can't believe that's done. I can't. I got this I, done, I, right? Or, or, or I, I learned BGP cold, or I'm, I'm on DevNet and I'm learning all these different programmability things. And now I have a pretty good idea about Python or what, whatever it applies to. What I, I you know, landscaping in your yard. Yep. Yep. It so uh, it really changes your life. It does. It, does. it really does. So this is. 
Um, so I think, <laughs> but, so I'm going to stop saying I'm going to get off my soapbox, because I'm pretty much just going to keep going back and forth on these topics because these are great. Um, we should do like a leadership podcast or something, man. Like this would be great. Like a leadership, like weekly podcast, you and I or something. Um, so, so I, be, so I, I use, you know what Kanban is? Do you know what Kanban? I don't believe so. So Kanban is this system where it, it was developed years ago for like, um, car manufacturers so they could uh, properly um, uh, create cars, be efficient, do the orders correctly. But it, it's it's not an automated auto- automation system per se, but you can automate the process. And really what it is is um, the intent is that you're limiting how much work you can do at a time. And there's this, this industry, and it's not just our industry, it's worldwide, right, that we can multitask, that our brains can multitask. And in reality, we can't. That our brains are not meant to multitask. When we lose focus or we change focus from one thing to another, we actually hinder our brain to, to be what it needs to be. And so um, what I... I so I have this system. I use Kanban and I can show you at some point and I can post it. Um, I've talked about it with a few other people that we know. Um, and and it, I live and die by it because I put everything, every task and every project in my life, not just work, not just zig bits, not just, you know, podcasts. I mean, everything that I need to do in life and I put it on there, I put a due date, I put how much time it's going to take and it, I can only do one task at a time. Now, yeah. if something's blocking that task, then sure, I block it, I put a reason down, and I come back to it the next day or whenever that blocking's done, right? But this is this is how you effectively get things done. And that, that's that's it. You know, you're not yeah. doing anything else. You're just effectively getting things done by focusing on one thing at a time. And the fu- the funny thing about that is let's let's relate that to something that probably everybody's familiar with. Yeah. Tr- troubleshooting on the CCIE exam. Right? <laughs> Troubleshooting section on the CCIE exam. A friend of mine, a really good friend of mine, uh, both Anthony Sequeira and Terry Vincent, I have to put a call out to both of those because they're also partially uh, responsible for me passing my IE back in the day in the first place because they they told me something. And it was, it was at first it was like a time management thing, but it, it's really that that whole multitasking thing, right? It was something called quick fire. You go, you got 10 trouble tickets, right? You try to find the problem as quick as you can. If you can't find the problem, you have three minutes to find the problem, three minutes to fix the problem. If you can't, within three minutes, you mark down what you think it may be, put a note onto the next one. So at, at that point, by the time it's the same priority task thing that we were just talking about, you you go through all these things, but in the back of your brain, it's still working. You might come across something that you might see through the other nine that might make make that mm-hmm. solvable or, or something that you can achieve. And lo and behold, you get to the point where you're 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 steadying your mind. One of the things that is is probably the worst for me, <laughs> you know, I get all these things done, but I, can't, I I don't sleep very well sometimes because I might be laying there in bed thinking, okay, I've got to edit this chapter, I've got to do this, and in my brain, I'm I got drag and drop stuff going in my brain. I'm moving stuff here. I got this, and I'm, I'm creating all these timelines. That doesn't help. No, it doesn't. Help. But it get it out on paper. Get it on paper. Get it get out of your head. Oh yeah. Sleep. Wake up and then continue going and. And what it's almost like a project plan for your brain, you know. And you know, you had mentioned you had mentioned that um, that the concept of doing what you were doing, and, and it, it really got me to thinking. You know, I I have a dry erase board at home, and I, I put a bunch of stuff that I need to work on. But the biggest and most important thing that you, I think, that you might have mentioned that it seemed like we might have glossed over a little bit was the due date. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, if you're at work at Cisco or if you work at a lot of these companies, there's this whole thing about smart goals, right? Yep. You know, you know, measurable, yep. actionable. All that stuff. Time, oh, time yeah. bound, right? If you don't put a time on there or you don't schedule your lab exam or something to put. It's it's reinforcement of it. Okay. This needs to get done. It's exactly right. Yep. You'll keep. Uh, life happens. Other things come up that in, in at that moment might be more important. And, and I'm not even going to lie to you. I have a quote hanging right here on, on the wall. Um, I, I don't you can move can, it and see. I don't know if I can flash you. It. It's just paper. No, I don't know if you can even see it. Ooh, it's too far away. It's That's too far cloud. away. It's too small. There's right cloud. Steve. You know what that paper says? I've, I've, I heard this quote when I was in my teens. And I try so hard because I started in IT when I was like 15. I'm not even going to lie to you. I started doing computers. See. Long story. I started when I was 16, so we're in the same boat. I started when I was really young, okay? And the quote says, the reason that most people fail instead of succeed is because they trade what they want the most for what they want at the moment. Yep. Yeah. 
And if you if you read that quote back, it applies to everything. It could be, man, I really wanted to, I really wanted to put an addition onto my house, but I bought a sports car or or whatever whatever the new hotness is that you feel like you have to have. You you have it. You live it in the moment, and you don't pay attention to your long term goals because they're not time bound or they're they're not structured right. You you give up what you want the most. For what you want at the moment, and that's the, mo- the reason most people fail instead of succeed. I I live and die by that quote. Well, it's like right? that is something that is absolutely. It's the truth. perfect. It's perfect. So like here's an ex- so like physical fitness, right? If you want to be fit, right? Yeah. But that's a long term goal, right? That's not a a short term goal. That's a long term life health goal. And it really you is. Could go get cupcakes, like someone else did today. This oh, guy I heard right you here. got some cupcakes. Yeah, yeah. But that's a- <laughs> do you know what I mean? Like in Mountain Dew, you know. Plug for Mountain Dew, right? Too much sugar. Too much sugar. <laughs> but I'm just saying, like, if your goals, if your goals, goals are long-term goals. They're not short-term goals. And you can make them relatively short, short as a year, maybe six months, whatever. But if you're not focused on your goal and you're mentally keeping yourself in check, you do those short-term things that affect, that, that hurt your long-term goal. So, yeah, I mean, it happens. It, it definitely happens. I love that quote. That's an awesome Yeah, quote. I mean, one thing that I think... It, one of my mentors, he is still my mentor since I was 17 years old. He's actually now my financial planner. Oh. He was my networking teacher when I was 17. Okay. Oh. I got my CNA and Novell, my Microsoft Office or mouse certifications, my A plus. I was helping everybody with you know, all this stuff way back in the day. And he, he's been a, a mentor to me. And I mean, if anything, that would be an awesome video. It's just to have this guy in because I call him the wizard. Because there is nothing that I don't think that this man cannot do. He's just tremendous and, and he's been a big role model in my life. And one of the things that I think is just absolutely paramount, right, is is he, he always has a way of saying things that really make you think, right? And if it's not that quote, it's something like, um, you know, if you if you have a goal in mind, imagine you're out at sea. You you might appreciate this, even though you're you're your Marines, not Navy. Imagine you're out at sea. You're you're out on the sea, and you start going off course. Well, as you know, the trajectory, right? If you if you go off course just a little bit, by the time you get to that destination across the sea, you're on an, you're in another world, right? Yep. You, you, you know, one one little course correction could really take you off track, right? One degree. Oh. Well, one degree. So one of the things he says that if you're planning for something, whether it's financial, whether it's a certification, whether it's a life goal, whether it's having children, whatever, whatever it is, and you start going off track just a little bit. And for me, it might be diet, right? Mm-hmm. You know, uh, or try to stay, stay healthy. You make these little course corrections. And as long as you're making course corrections as a sailor, as, as a network engineer, developer, whatever it may be, as long as you're making course corrections, you will eventually get to your destination. For real, for real. When I, stop. I, it's when you stop or don't pay attention to it, you wind up in Bermuda. So <laughs> I I keep, and I can't show you because my microphone doesn't move like yours, um, but or my oh, camera doesn't yeah. move like yours. Um, yeah, yeah. So, but I, I keep a kind of reminder board. It's not a reminder board. It just takes stuff that I put on my, my monitor um, because my top like five or six goals are up here, like, like physical fitness, um, being um, more... In, uh, What's the word I want? Being more in touch with my family, like, you know, family time and that kind of stuff, you know, um, being more in touch with um, my community, you know, and giving back to the community, right? So I just have these things here because I want them at top of mind. I, if, if I don't see them regularly, then I let those other things come in, you know? I'm a big video game guy. I love playing video games, but I could I could waste a day away or two days away playing a game, you know, instead of giving giving time to the family or, you know, working on going and working out. I mean, it's, it's just personalities get, my personality can get in the way, right? So I have to trick it almost to remind myself that these things are important. These are what I want and I do want them. Should I do this thing I'm thinking of doing right now or should I do something that's more, you know, focused on my, my goals? You know, it's funny you say that. And I don't know if you remember this from our one of our sales meetings, but we brought somebody in who created this movement called Because I Said I Would. Oh, and you told me about this. Speaker, we had the speaker come in and he has a website. I think it's called because I said I would, but I know if you follow at because I said I would, that that will give you all the information. And he gives you out these cards 
And these little cards say, because I said I would, and you just write whatever you want or whatever your goal is on it, and really try to live by that. Make that one of your priorities. Mm -hmm. You know, that's that course correction we're talking about. And one of the things that I wrote, I wrote two things on here. Um, you know, because being physically fit is is one of the things I want to try to do. My family traditionally hasn't been exactly the healthiest. So I put cut out sugar and manage my lifestyle to be more healthy so I can be around for my kids, right? I mean, yeah. that's, that's pretty important. And the other one that I think is almost as big is the top one that says, enjoy the now. That's and cool. when when you when you're writing books and going through all this stuff, whatever it is that you're doing, right? If you're going for certifications, you're building a house, you're starting a family, sometimes it's really easy to get lost in the, how it's going to be mm -hmm. in the future and where I want to be, and where I want to go versus what is going on right in front of you right now. And everybody who probably listens to this as well as yourself can, and our significant others can probably understand that, the now when you're studying or going through all this stuff might leave significant others and family upstairs while you're sitting in a basement for 40 hours a week studying, right. Or working and traveling or whatever it may be. There's, there's other sides of that coin that might not, um, they, they want you to succeed, but in the same sense, they might be affected by it. Right. So mm -hmm. sometimes it's okay to just enjoy the now go upstairs, play with your kids, go outside, play Frisbee or do whatever it is you do, you know, play those video games every once in a while. Right. Uh, but it's so important when I when I when I saw that I was like I'm I'm really going to start doing that and you have your goals you mentioned around your monitor I have a magnet thing right here next to my desk that has that and a picture of my family and that's basically it right I mean you 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 have to know what's important yes and sometimes you have to weigh out what's more important in the now and what's more important in the future and um, that's it's really been a guiding light for me I really think it's been pretty important for me to to be where I'm at. So, Dude, we, we should have talked about that at Cisco Live. I had a personal personal growing moment at Cisco Live this year. Um, and I'll throw it on here too. I'm on as well. I'm pretty transparent. So, um, you know, I presented for the first time at Cisco Live, which I know you're, you're aware of. Um, and it was a great opportunity. I think I did great. I kind of, I don't know if I did great, like in the moment, right? Because I was doing it. And the feedback you get when you're presenting isn't always, hey, you're doing great. It's, you know, some people are, you know, laughing at what you're trying to make jokes of. And some people are really intent on what you're talking about. And sometimes you just get into the kind of the motion of doing things. And I, I kind of, I overpracticed, right? So, but, um, I was focusing on the wrong things. Like, let's just, I was focusing on things that aren't, that don't really matter. What really matters is the customers and presenting for them and giving that, that, that value. And, and I went in that way, but then after the session, um, that day, it was like, I was focusing on the scores and the ratings and you know, all that, all that stuff. Right. And like, I had some, some people that I look up to with, within the community that really, you know, I was talking to and they like, Hey, you, you got to stop. Like you, you're, this isn't what you want. And, and it's right. It's not what I want. And I fell in that trap of focusing on something that's not important. Right. Um, and, and you gotta, you gotta be mindful that you're going to have these things come up. Right. And no one's perfect in life. Um, and I'm sure not perfect and I know it, right. Though I try to be perfect. I'm not, um, there's no way you're going to be perfect. So don't, don't think that, yeah. um, whoever's listening. So. <laughs> You, you know, it, everybody falls victim to that to some degree. And I think because in our minds, and, and maybe I'm, I could be complete, I, I will state this that I could be completely speaking for just myself and not the majority of everybody who speaks to Cisco Live, right? I'm just happy to be there, yep. right? To be able to be a speaker to me was, was, a, a, it was a goal. I mean, that's something I've always wanted to do. And I'm, I'm so passionate and I love it. And I'm so happy that I could, I, they even asked me back, right? Um, and then again, there are there's that that thought process of it in a way you want to do the best you, want, you just want mm -hmm. to do the absolute best you could possibly be. So that's where in my mind some of the scores come in. Like, what can I do better? But then also I'm like, you just want to be the best of the best, right? You just want to do the best you can. And exactly. Leave it all out there, right? But in the same sense, in the same sense, right? It goes back to being transparent and honest, and just like you said, right? You know, I, I've I've been fortunate to speak quite a few times, and some of the feedback you get like. The, they were doing the dishes in the other room and it was too loud. <laughs> you can't, you can't affect change there. I can't really do anything about that. <laughs> yeah. But in the same sense, so you, you, you start thinking about things like that. And you're like, well, how, how can I have done it better? 
And every time I go, I'm like, how can I do it better? How can I do it better? And to be funny, the funny thing about it is I, I, I present all over the place. That's literally what I do for my job. Right. And I still get nervous. Same. I still get nervous. Still every single time, you know, and I think that's good. I, I think there'd be something to say if you weren't nervous, right? I think, I think yeah, it's like then you're. What are you if you're not nervous? Right? Arrogant, yeah, right? exactly. You're, you're, you're almost. I mean, you could be used to doing something over and over again, and that's fine. You don't want to get complacent, no, right? You don't want to sound, sound robotic. But in the same things, you also don't want to come off arrogant, like, hey, all these people are here to see me, and that's I'm, not I'm it, a big right? deal and all that. Yeah, no, that's not. That's not. Yeah, I, you know, yeah. Swear, you know, I don't like the whole big head syndrome and the, you know, the the whole concept of brand you know the, the funny thing is everybody has their own unique brand everybody does their own thing and they're and they do their own uh whatever hobbies or, or thing whatever may be to build and defines you and w- one of the things my manager has said and i i love the saying it's impact before brand oh yeah for sure Impact before brand and if you think of it that way it's like and you go into every single thing you're doing. And, you know, you mentioned your way of like building out how you go about each task. And one of the ways I I do there's something called SIPAB, right? Or S C I P A B, uh, solution, complication, implication, uh, position, action, benefit. So if you just Google S C I P A B. This is the coolest little thing. There's like six boxes, and you can talk about whatever it is. Like we sit down and say the solution is you know we're going to talk on a podcast. What are we going to talk? You know what's the complications? We really want to get out to the users and people who are listening, why it's so important to, to prioritize certain tasks, whatever. Yeah. And then you build all that different stuff. And it really helps you build and design how you're going to do presentations or, or target anything that you want to accomplish. It's so cool. So the whole idea there is if you do this whole impact before a brand thing, you're really building out what kind of impact you're hoping to get out of what you're doing. And the whole impact for me speaking to Cisco Live is helping people. And exactly. that's one of the things that um, I really wanted to talk about. And I'm glad I'm kind of, I'm, we, I'm We're getting back to the, to the agenda, in, right? I'm weaving my way into this conversation. I know. Right? Is that, um, you know, even though we do the books, we do the Cisco Live stuff, we do all these videos, we do all these different things, right? You know, the benefit, the, benefit, the, the purpose of it is to help people. Mm-hmm. You know, I, you know, we we talked about this this metal DevOps thing that I'm doing. I got there this it is. You got a shirt on. The whole the whole concept is like it, it's. I'm taking two of the things I absolutely adore and love: metal music and technology, sticking them together, and then hopefully it can help somebody, right? But going into it with that intention is whole different. You know, it's a whole different ball of wax than it is going in it to saying, "Hey, everybody, look at me." And I've never been a "Hey, everybody, look at me" kind of guy. It just, it drives me nuts. And one of the things that I really absolutely adore and love doing is working with people who are humble, down to earth. I mean, all everybody I interact with is, is just tremendous and salt of the earth. And, and that I think makes things more attainable, especially if we're out there to try to help people. We're, it's all about building community. Exactly. I, I, I say that over and over and over again. You'll hear me on all these different interviews, all these different things, community, 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 community. And here's why. Many, many years ago when I was studying from all this stuff, when I had hair again, I felt alone. I felt alone because back then there was like, hey, here's a couple books. TCP IP, <laughs> land switching. Enjoy. Optimal routing design, maybe. Optimal oh. routing design. Like, yeah. You're, you're not, yeah. you're not you're, I mean, exactly. <laughs> That's it. Like, there wasn't a whole heck of a lot. And we are so blessed and fortunate to have YouTube. Mm-hmm. to have learning at cisco.com to have devnet you know to have all these tools and stuff that we never had before right so many resources now yeah everything is at the tip it's... of your fingers that you never had before and before you also didn't have the ability to do this and have access to other people to share to make those groups i mean you might be studying with somebody who's in new zealand and you well, you can't ever get you know there wasn't there wasn't that. Actually, right? I mean, so let, let's put that in a specific use case, right? So the CCD study group that we were both in, right? I mean, that was a worldwide study group. It was small. Sure it wasn't like hundreds and hundreds of people. Daniel, we, did, me, you. I mean, there's so many folks that were in that. Yeah. I think Nick, Nick, was, was, in that Nick was in it. I mean, you got um, Bruno was in it. I mean, a whole Bruno. bunch of people. Malcolm. Um, the yep. list, the list yeah, keeps awful. going on and on. And this is people from all over the world. So we could never have done that years ago when we didn't have those, those capabilities or those resources available to us. But like yeah. that, that was the single most important thing for me was that study group. Exactly. You Hands know? down. 
because you learn other you learn all that information you wouldn't have got if you wanted you get all those different purviews and, mm -hmm. and, and mindsets and things like that and other people's opinions is so strong and so important you know and the only time i ever get to see a lot of these folks is cisco live. live like the <laughs> one time a year i get to see everybody right i see you cisco live you know once a year and you know we talk we talk frequently but it's not the same right as being able to interact and have that community exactly and I, I think that that's one of the things i really wanted to get out is that there's always a purpose to do things right it's not just it's not i'm everybody look at me hey right? i'm zig look at me yeah, yeah no it's, not it's, it's to give yeah it's to give back because back when we were doing this originally there wasn't that for us we weren't able to do that and i had so many people come up to me like you know which is interesting because more and more recently I started interacting with a lot of folks going for the CCNA and the CCNP and the DA, DP, you know, programmability and all this other stuff. Originally, when I was doing a lot of the blogs and stuff like that, and it was more niche focused on CCIE stuff. And that was just because that was what I was doing at the time. Mm -hmm. right? That was what I was primarily focusing on. But you miss out. You miss out on talking to a whole bunch of different people and getting, getting feedback. And to be completely honest with you, when I was going for my CCNA, there was nobody I could talk to. I, I remember, this is so funny. This is so funny because fat way, way, way a long time ago, I was going for my CCIE way back in there. This is like, oh, six. Okay. No, okay. You were way ahead of me. Oh, <laughs> oh, four, I think, when I was studying, going through all this stuff, right? And I get to this, this company where I was working, and the person who was the senior network engineer was one of the most condescending, cocky, uh, just... De just depressing person to be around because they they knew everything and that was it right there was no way around that and they wouldn't share the knowledge and I remember sitting there one day and this, I'm not even lying this is like I, I, there are people who can confirm this I'm sitting there and I'm like I, I finally get the position as a junior network engineer and didn't mean I reported to this person but I would have to work with this person mm -hmm. yep and here I am at this time I'm an NP. He was not certified at all. Uh, went for the IE many times, failed it, right? And which is fine. And which is totally fine. You don't need to be certified to know what you're doing. Yep. I'm going to put that out there. It, it's cool, but you don't need to. You don't need to be. But when you're going to be condescending, cocky, and derogatory towards people, ooh, you, you got to have something to be coming from. You know, you got to have. Well, I still you know, think that that's not how you should be. Yeah. Even if you so, have it, though, like you know, yeah. even if you're the an eight times CCIE, you shouldn't be yeah. condescending, and cocky. You should, you should and, never be that way. You know, that's never. not that's not how to be yeah. successful. You know, and in, 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 in my mind, I'm like I'm a really nice guy. I'm an outgoing guy, but I'm also kind of I'm also <laughs> I'm also <laughs> me. And people who truly <laughs> truly know me know that I I don't really put up with stuff, yeah. right? Yeah. And this person sat down next to me. We were, we were doing a networking configuration. He grabbed his laptop, grabbed it, spun it across the desk at me. Whip, like that. Sorry, the microphone. Whipped it across the desk at me, and he goes, create a VLAN. <laughs> so I'm like, what? So I created a VLAN, spun it back over to him. He goes, oh, so you remember that from class, don't you? And I'm just looking like, you know, you know, <laughs> and then he made some, some derogatory. He actually made some derogatory comments after that, which was I, I, I'm not going to say. On yeah, yeah, yeah. Gotcha. They were completely not not a problem. I mean, like <laughs> nothing to do with technology. Just kind of attacking me, my physical appearance and everything. And I, it was just I couldn't believe it. Right. And you're supposed to be learning from somebody, and then they're supposed to be kind of like being a role model and a good coach or a mentor. And then for them to say something that could it, it just hurt to the core, right? Yep. And. It made me really think, and part of it, part of what I thought was one day, I'm going to get my CCIE. I'm going to go work for Cisco. This is what I had. This is my plan. These were what I had written down back in the day. <laughs> back in the day. CCIE, I'm going to go work for Cisco. This was back when it was like a thousand CCIEs in the world. I was going to get it. Took me a while, but took me quite a while. But I got I got there right, and I was going to do this, and I was never, ever, ever going to treat anybody the way that that guy treated me. And I'm going to help people. Yeah, that's it. That's and all that if I can help people, cool. If I can't, I, I I try my best. I do I do what I can. I can't help everybody, but I do I do what I can, right? And that to me was a life lesson of how never to ever be in life 
And there's there's too many arrogant, big headed folks out there who walk around and they might be smart. You might be super smart. You you might have more certifications. You might be a doctorate. You might you might be an astrophysicist. You know what I mean? But there's something about being a moral human that is is critical to what we do and critical to sharing the success. And there there was a quote, and I saw this somewhere, and it said, I don't know who it was probably a, a funny meme or something on Facebook. But it said, if you're fortunate enough to get to the top floor, send the elevator back down. Oh, yeah. That's perfect. Right? Yeah. I, mean, that, I, I heard that. I was like, ooh, I like, I like that. Right? Because that's the thing. You didn't get there on your own, despite the fact you might be, you might be a, you know, running up a hill, working every day. You put in a lot of the effort. Don't get me wrong. But you know what? Truth of the matter is somewhere along the line, some point, another person helped you. Exactly. Oh man, that's such a great. You relied on somebody, dude. Period. No, I'm gonna, I'm gonna. You can say I started all on my own. <laughs> somebody wrote that book. Somebody gave you the the equipment. Somebody helped you download the software. Said, so, you know what I mean. Somewhere, somebody helped you on your journey. Yep. That's called human nature and life. So, uh, be kind to one another. You gotta be <laughs> you know kind, I mean? right? You gotta be kind. So, um, I'm gonna say this again. We should do like a leadership podcast, like an IT leadership I, podcast, would, right? Because this would be yeah. great, like an hour long every week or every other week, and just put it out there. Because this people don't get leadership stuff. They don't, you know, they don't get it you on a daily basis. An hour? Yeah, man, fifty three minutes. I mean, I, I'm rounding. So, uh, fifty three minutes since I started. No worries. This is fine, dude. Um, I'm gonna add one more thing, right? So you talk about kindness, right? So my son just, I guess, graduated from kindergarten. I don't know if that's a, a thing or not. I guess it's a thing, right? I don't remember if I graduated from kindergarten, um, you know, back in the day. Um, I don't remember well, what I did in kindergarten. <laughs> I know, right? I think there was nap time or something. Um, yeah. So they give out awards now. I don't, I don't think that, I don't know if they did awards when when we were in school, but they give out awards, and my son got the the kindness award for <laughs> the entire kindergarten, all grades. So it's quite interesting, you know, kind just being kind, right? It's so such an amazing thing to do because how you interact with someone else, they're going to remember, you know, and, and being kind is so important. So important. It is. And the, the word that I think I associate directly with kindness is approachable. Oh, yeah, be for sure. Like how many times have we been at Cisco Live? You know, <laughs> you know what you're going to say, you know, you know, I mean, people come out of all over the place and, and they say hello. And, and you know what? I do my best to make an effort to talk to every single person because I'm that kind of guy. And unless I'm absolutely running late and if I'm running late to something like I got to go present, I'll say I'm running late. I got to go present. Please connect with me here and we will connect and we'll talk it out because it's a two way street, right? Mm -hmm. When you meet somebody, you, you don't know how that person is going to change or adapt your life. It might seem it's, they might be going for their CCNA. They might be a doctorate wizard, right? Who, who knows all these different things. It doesn't matter. We, we connect on other levels, right? Like it might be something that helps you with your personal life or, or helps you with your family, or maybe there's something going on from a healthcare perspective that, you, you, you know, and in my opinion, my belief, and I truly believe this, and I say this a lot is it's all about people, right? One of the things that I, I, I truly love is that way back in the day, I don't know if you remember this, Cisco had the, the, uh, it was called the human network. Right? Mm, yes, that was, that was the tagline. It was a human. Now, now it's, now it's we, uh, the bridge to possible, which I think is also a very good one. But not talking about marketing and things like that. It really is about the human network. It's about oh, people yeah. talking to people and being relevant and approachable and open to other people. For sure. I mean, that, that's yeah. all this is all about. Seriously. Yeah. Like nothing else could be built. Period without people. So I mean, if you start there and you're kind and you're wholehearted and you you do whatever you can to to to, to really be there for folks, I think that that makes a huge difference in life. It really does. Yeah, I'm with you 100 percent as always, man. 